Hello YouTube, my name is Daniel and today I'm going to be showing you how we can upload files to S3 on Android. So I have this mock application here which allows us to select a file from the user's media storage and then upload it to S3. So you can see here I selected the file and we received a toast message saying the file has been uploaded. If I go to my S3 bucket, you can actually see the uploaded file and I'll just download it to show you guys. And we can see here the lovely picture of Bill Gates. So in order to get this set up, you will already need to have your um, AWS CLI installed, configured, and also administrator access to that account. Um, I'm assuming those would already be done. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's a pretty simple step and most of my videos assume that you already have that configured. So I've been following this guide here from the Amplify docs to actually show you how to get all this done. Um, I'll post a link for this and I'll also show you my implementation of this on GitHub. So you want to go ahead and create a basic AW, um, Android Studio project, get all those things set up and then declare your dependencies. So you will need this set up in your compile options for um, library desugaring and also the compatibility for version 1.8. And firstly it's showing these dependencies here, but you will actually need more than that to get your file uploaded to S3. So I'll just show you these now. So you will need the AWS SDK for Android dependency, along with the SDK mobile, the Amplify framework, the tools for desharing, and the storage and the auth dependencies. You will also need to declare in your Android manifest these permissions here. So write to external storage, internet, and read external storage. Once all those have been configured, we can actually go ahead and set up our um, Android application to be used with Amplify. So I've already done this, but I will run through this with you now. So we want to run Amplify init to initialize our application. It's going to ask you, do you want to use an existing environment? I'm going to say no. Into a name, I'm going to say test. And this is going to set up a Amplify application via CloudFormation. It will go ahead and create all the templates, deploy it into your AWS account, and get everything sorted for you. So that's now being configured. The next thing is we're going to add our plugins. So this would be for storage or Cognito or AWS API, so anything you're going to be using with the application, you then want to add it. In order to do that, we want to run Amplify Add Storage. And we get asked two questions here. Do we want a content um, storage setup? So this is images, audio, or video, so that would be S3 or a NoSQL database, which would be DynoDB. We want to go for this one here. Okay, so I already have this set up. So I'm going to quickly remove my storage and then get back to you guys and so I can add it back in. Right, so that's my storage moved, so I can now go ahead and add it back. So yeah, the command is amplify add storage, we want content, and now we need to provide a friendly name for our application. Um, I'm just going to use the default, but you probably want to type one in. Again, a friendly name for our bucket. Um, I'm just going to use the default. And now we want to set up our authentication, so auth users or auth and guest. I'm going to use auth and guest, and then we declare the permissions for the authenticated users. I'm just going to give these everything and all permissions again for the guest user. And no, we don't want a Lambda trigger. And that should be our storage all set up. There we go, that's been successful. 
So now in order to actually get our Android app running and communicating with AWS, we need to launch these commands here to say amplify configure. So I created a class to do this. So I have this Amplify class, which will actually initialize Amplify for us. So when this gets called, it will add the plugins for storage and cognito, which is our authentication, and then configure it so it can actually communicate back to AWS. So when we go over to our main activity, we can see that on, in the onCreate method, so as soon as the application starts up, we are running the Amplify class and then specifying the initialize amplify function and then pass in the context this at main activity and so as soon as the application starts up we'll configure amplify and be able to talk to AWS. We then have the upload button which is the button here for select file and when that button is clicked it's going to first check whether we have permission to read external storage. So manifest up permission external storage and if that has been granted it will then select a function which allows us to pick an image from the user's storage directory if not it will request that permission and then if we go down to that function so show image chooser that's going to take the activity so the main activity it's then going to start a intent which is a gallery intent and then intent.action.pick so we're going to be picking from a directory and this is the directory we want so the media store images media external content URI and then we will start an activity for result and then specify a request code to. We then have a function up here which responds to that request code so here we go, on activity result, and then if the result code equals OK, and then if the result code equals equals 2, we then have the data which is passed back from the actual image chooser, which will be the image URI. And then we're setting a variable here, so the selected image file URI equals the data.data, .data, which is the URI of our image. I then log that to the debug counter down here and then we're going to convert the URI to the file path. Unfortunately um, you cannot upload a file via URI straight up to AWS, you do have to convert it into a file first. It's not like um, Firebase or other applications where you can actually just directly upload via URI, we do have to convert it first. So I have the this set of code here which will actually take um, the URI, that get that gets given to it and then provide the actual file. So we can see from the logs that the URI is this string here which is received to the function. Um, we can't upload this to AWS, we need to convert it to something like this here which is the truth path of the image. This can then be converted into a file and then uploaded. Once we have that file we can then call a function here called upload file and then, photo, and then pass that file here, which is the variable photo path. If this fails, we're just going to make us host um, to the user. That takes the URI, and then we then print it out to the log. We then convert that URI to a file object, and then we can use this amplify storage upload file function to upload it to AWS. So the key here is upload a file, that will be the name of the directory and then we then pass the file, which is up here. And then if that's successful, we will make a toast message, and then if it's an error, we will just log it in the log down here. Right guys, that is the end of this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how we can actually read files from S3, download them on, onto the phone, and then display them to the user. So definitely check out for that one on my channel. I will post any links I've used in the description and also a link to the full GitHub project. Please like the video and please subscribe.